Gentlemen, thank I'm you VP. for being here. This VP. Is awesome. Appreciate yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> running for president, third party, uh, the Cannabis Freedom Party. That's right. Yes, sir. Tell me about Revenant. Tell me all about this. What are you, what are you guys up to? Tell us all about it. Go ahead, Kyle. Kyle started this company, so we'll let him go. And Kyle, welcome back, by the <laughs> Thank way. Thank you. Great to be with you. I just man. said Thank a moment ago. So much. Tell me if I'm wrong here. I said Kyle Turley, he went from C B D and now we're graduating to <laughs> full blown cannabis. Oh, I went I went right to the top of the mountain at first. I just realized the C B D is the base camp that everybody needs to be at to understand the benefit potential and and here we are ten years later, right? We've been at this thing for a long time and we're still here and we got guys that are still falling and looking like crap and that just shouldn't happen, man. We should be living long, healthy, happy lives and through this plant it's how we did it, Jim and I, I mean two separate three separate decades of football apart here and uh, we're the only ones showing up at these reunions that are looking good. <laughs> yeah, you do. You, you you stay with the product. I mean, we've seen guys come and go, and you push something different every other year. Yeah, but you can tell it's working for. Well, them. we started this company with that purpose of getting this, you know, to the public and this yeah. message out, you know, through true resolution, and that's what it has been. And you know, our consumer base and our our, our uh, you know people that are buying our products, we're in seven different states now with our marijuana products, um, and uh, we've just launched a hemp line. You can go to thegaspipe.net and order all fifty state legal hemp products now to any door in America and these okay. are now THC options that are legal that people can understand that euphoric side of cannabis and you know get off these pills uh, those things all get everybody high they all know it and everybody's driving around a little buzz whatever you're doing and the thing with cannabis as we've discovered now is that it's a, an exit drug not a gateway drug because Snoop Dogg just quit <laughs> <laughs> Jim, what what Good. Why do you think there's been a reluctance? It sounds like you feel as though there's a reluctance to, to yeah. adopt this. Well, we know why. You know, Jim, you can take it away. That's Jim's talking points because <laughs> there is a reluctance on purpose. Well, where do I start? I mean, it's just... Uh, <laughs> the lies. Yeah, they, they've yeah. lied to us for over 100 years about this plant. You know, like Kyle just said, it's, it's, a, it's an exit. It's not a drug. It's a medicinal herb. That's right. And uh, it's been mislabeled and, and uh, it just degraded for... Over 100 years, they've been lying to us about it. Uh, it, was, it was legal back in the 20s and 30s until Big Pharma kind of took over and said, wait a minute, you know, let's, let's hand out these pills instead. Yeah, it's unfortunate. There's a lot, lot to be had here. Jim, yeah. how, much, how, how much longer could you have played in the league if um, quarterbacks are protected the way they are today? Cause I remember the highlights of some of the hits you've taken <laughs> well, over the years. I probably still would have did something dumb and took off and ran. And <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it, it'd be nice to be able to sit back and know they can't you know, take a shot at your knees or, or club you in the head after you threw the ball. But, uh, you know, it's just everything's changed in this country. So, you know, football is just no different than that. Whatever happened to the Roselle headband? Who has it? I have no idea. Yeah, probably somebody's my, got it. My equipment uh, manager, probably he, he had all those headbands back in the day. And you know, nobody thought about keeping stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, I certainly didn't, you know. But uh, it'd be nice to have that original. Zill mentions taking some of the hits that you took in your career. And I know that there's one in New England that people probably remember in the Super Bowl against the Patriots when Ronnie LePet oh. made a hit that I think he'd get you thrown out of the league now, right? Forever. I mean, oh, when and, I got dumped upside yeah, down. Yeah, when you went yeah. upside down and, and he, you know, went low on you, which is not allowed. And then after the play, they would have been thrown out of the game for the taunting after the play. I mean, it, it, it looks like a different sport now than what you played when you were playing. Oh, there's no doubt about it. Yeah. Like I said, everything has changed in this country, and uh, I understand what they're trying to do, you know, keep these guys healthy, but you know, football is a violent game. People are going to get hurt, and, uh, you know, I, w I was used to it. I, I spent, you know, most of every off season I played in rehab with either a surgery or something, so I, I understand it, but uh, it, 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 they're kind of like taking football out of football. Now, do you know that there's like an urban myth about that play, that after the play you said something? to Ronnie LaPette about, hey, I was going to let you hang in this thing, but forget it. Now we're going to destroy you. Is that, is that true? Was there any truth uh, to that rumor? I don't know about that. <laughs> I, I was just trying. My knee hurt pretty damn bad after that. <laughs> That's all. I was trying not to let him know that he hurt me. But, uh, yeah, I, I don't remember any conversations. Kyle, you excited the uh, game's going back to New Orleans next year? Man, uh, and both of us. That's where he won yeah, his that's ring. Where he won his first. Yeah, yeah man. We're, two rings are oh, we're in New Orleans. No both way. were in there. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, Against so the same team oh, yeah. <laughs> on the same day, 11 years apart. It was kind of a no deja vu way. moment. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Well, that's going to be a big one for us. Yeah. You're going back home. Super Bowl's been a while since it's been back in the easy, so I should I'm be there a lot more man. than what it is. Yeah, we're going to yeah. have some big events next year. It's going to be a lot of fun, man. I'm going to be talking with Jay Moore about a big comedy event. We've got an event this week. Uh, 
uh, you know, we have our golf tournament. We'll be having that again as well. And uh, all the restaurants, I'm going to get Emerald and all these people, all my people. I, I still go there all the time. That's where I'm moving to when my kids are done and out of the house. As long as we can go to Mother's <laughs> That's see right. breakfast, man. That place is awesome. We'll be there cutting in line. <laughs> <laughs> what are your thoughts on this game and the contrast between the two quarterbacks, Jim? Well, I don't follow this game as much as you know a lot of people here in the room, but uh, I think it's going to be a hell of a game. I'm I'm partial to Kansas City because Andy Reid is is a friend of mine, and we're teammates back in college. I've known him forever, and I'm excited to see how well he's done. Uh, he was a hell of a lot. He's a hell of a lot better coach than he was a player. <laughs> no, he was. A, Andy was a scrappy player, man, and and we had a lot of fun together. And and it's amazing to see what he's done uh, with his coaching career. There, there's some rumors out there, like Adam Schefter from ESPN started this that potentially if they win, that Andy could walk away and maybe Belichick slide in there, which I don't see happening. I don't think Bill's a fit there. Yeah. But do you think if they win that Andy could potentially walk away, whether? There's a health issue or something, but you got it easy with Mahomes every year to get in it, you know? Well, I, I think he's done a good job grooming him. You know, I, yeah. you got to love an old offensive lineman who likes to throw the ball like Andy does. Hell yeah. Uh, Andy was a hell of an athlete. I still remember the picture of him back at the punt passing punt pass kick when he was a little kid. <laughs> he looked, he looked, he like, a, he looked monster. like an adult compared yeah. to everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he could spin it then. He could still throw the ball. Last time I played catch with him uh, when I was with Green Bay, he was still spinning it pretty good. Wow. Jim, we talk about quarterbacks here all the time, and having experienced the kind of success that you had in the market that you had it in Chicago, they have the number one overall pick right now. Everybody thinks they're going to take a quarterback there. What kind of mental fortitude do you need to be able to get that team that, again, it's been a while since they've been on the game's biggest stage and won, what kind of mental fortitude will it take for that player to come in and have success? Well, I've said this comment before, and I got ripped for it. I said, you know, Chicago's where quarterbacks go to die. I mean, it's not a it's not a quarterback, you know, friendly team. I don't know what why it, it's always been. Who's their middle linebacker? Who's their running back? Right. That's always been their their forte, uh, and and the, the coaches they've had over the years. You know, I, I dealt with Mike Dickett for the seven years I was there, and, and that's not a quarterback friendly offense for sure. But uh, you know, it, it's a great sports town. Uh, a very knowledgeable sports town. They they love you if you just play hard. You play hard, they're going to love you. If you play hard and win, they're going to love you forever. And that that's been proven for the last 40 years. They still talk about our our team in '85. How are you and Dicka? Well, last last I saw him was a couple years ago at his event in Chicago. And uh, you know his health is not is yeah. not real good right now. We get along a hell of a lot better now than we did. Uh, it's always that. It's like Brady and Belichick. The, now. The seven like years that we were together. Uh, yeah. I would have loved to play with Mike. He was a great football player. Oh, he was good. Um, and I, I, he would have understood me a hell of a lot more had he been in my huddle. Because I think he thought I did things just to piss him off. You know, I, I was out there trying to win games. It know? didn't matter if it was you. It would have been anybody. That's what oh, my kids. Well, yeah. no, I yeah. mean, how many, how many quarterbacks has he had that were successful? Right. It's true. It's true. We didn't have any in New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> they trade the whole damn draft. We went through four every year. We went through Danny um, Werfel, Billy Joe Tolliver, Billy Joe Hobart, Gary Collins, uh, Jeff Blake, Aaron Brooks, Jake DeLob. <laughs> so, Jesus, they with, were all there. With the whole offensive line that we had, we could never get it figured out. You know, and it's the uh, best old line in football, and we just still couldn't figure out can you tell? <laughs> can you tell when you're in the huddle with one of those guys, yeah. oh, this isn't going to work? Yeah. How fast does it take yeah, to Yeah, some of them had out? nicknames, you know, like oh. Sack Machine. And, sack uh, Machine. <laughs> It was unfortunate. We just knew it was going to be a long day for us. You know, like we could block all day, but we're never going to get there. Wow. Uh, we went 3 and 13 one year. That was, uh, you know, miserable. <laughs> and through like five quarterbacks, you know. Yeah. Is there is there any getting confidence back in a player once it's gone? Because here in New England, first round pick from a few years ago, Mac Jones, he looks okay rookie year. His confidence is shot. The yeah. team's been horrible offensively yeah, the tough. last couple of years. Can it? Can you regain that, or is it gone forever once it's gone? No, I, you know, it's always there. You know, you just got to find it. It's at that league level, though, so, you know, you can't miss a step, man. You just got to get back out of it. You know, for me, it was about arguing to be back in the game, you know, because the coach wants to make that quick change. And so those guys got to sort it out at the end of the day. You know, it, it, there's only 1,800 guys to get that opportunity, and this next man up, if you can't get the job done, uh, unless you got some contract that's it's protecting yeah. you that they have to have you in there you know you're 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 uh, you're uh, you're, uh, you're an expendable commodity so you better find it last one for you for me um days when we played 
you know, you would never think about, okay, league's ever going to be in Vegas. Super Bowl's here in Vegas. Yeah. they got a team in Vegas. Yeah. I'll shock you. Like, like, slot machines. Well, it would never happen in our day. In the front. Yeah, no, no, no shock to me at all. I mean, the NFL just goes to where you know, whatever the trend is, that's where they're going to head, it seems like. Yeah, streaming yeah, and everything. It's unfortunate, though, because that's where yeah, it's making gone. making the public pay for games. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you good at streaming, Jim? Uh, no, I'm not. A, I, don't I, don't even know, I don't even know how to stream. Yeah, see? So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's not the same anymore, man. It's not as easy. Yeah, I'm trying to find the game last week on TV. I'm like, I can't find it. It was on all of our phones like two years ago, but they keep flipping through deals, you know, or you can't see certain things. And now they got slot machines and draft kings and everybody else and they'd say we can't talk about cannabis <laughs> yeah <laughs> something that's is. insanity yeah, that's something yeah, yeah that's why we're, we're hustling man i was just up in boston i see the shirt you know i know where you guys are from i was just in new hampshire i flew into boston a few weeks ago to went up to the primaries where nikki haley and uh uh dean uh, phillips uh just bum rush both of them up there at the primaries and uh, you know we're trying to get this thing pushed through because we know the answer to this uh, lies in this plant man to fix all these problems with this game Jim McMahon and Kyle Turley with us here on Zolak and Bertrand on 98.5 The Sports Hub, WBZ-FM, HD1, Boston. Do you think the league is eventually going to change their tune on this in terms of uh, not just maybe allowing it, but accepting that it can be helpful to the league and its players? Oh, you would hope so. I mean, it's still the only patented neuroprotectant on the planet. <laughs> and uh, why these guys aren't able to use what's actually good for their bodies is, is beyond me. Yeah, and then, you know, things are happening right now. One thing that we mentioned, Jim McMahon's running for president. Uh, we're a third-party candidate. Uh, we're, we're creating a, a third party and uh, going to go and really support uh, – people in politics that are for cannabis because we know the 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 things that can trickle down from that that are completely the opposite of what uh, these uh, other pundits want to say about it and you know th this is something that can really really restore so many people's lives and it's hopefully that the descheduling as we go to a schedule three drug from a schedule one drug which keeps it from being uh, studied on humans is what we're hoping for because then the answer to that question is the endogenous cannabinoid system and the NFL is finally going to have to acknowledge the number number one regulatory system in the human body. So how does, how, what are the logistics of running for president? What is that, what is that campaign? <laughs> Do you need secretary of state? Who's going to be in the cabinet? We had to get a lot of uh, Ricky Williams, Williams right Ricky here. Williams. Ricky Williams. We had to get a lot of signatures at the cannabis convention here a couple months ago. We had to get uh, a thousand signatures yep. or whatever yep. it is yeah. to get on the ballot. And so, uh, yeah, we went through that process. And like Kyle just said, he, he was up in New Hampshire. And... Uh, yeah, we're just trying to make some noise and, and get these people to realize what this plan actually does and, and stop all the foolishness and the lies that have been told about it. Right, because even as it is legalized at the local level, it is not at the federal level. Yeah. Right, and that's yeah. a big problem. For it I is the problem. Yeah. yeah, that's the NFL's excuse is it's a federal, you know, illegal drug, so we can't do anything. You know, I did a full presentation in front of them in L.A. at the top of the Marriott Hotel and their entire medical staff of all these military uh, guys from neurology to emergency medicine and and they all told me I was right. It's just going to take some time. Well, we don't have time. You know, we got guys dying that they're now saying slipped in the shower, you know, and that's the new, uh, you know, thing that people are dying of instead of the CTE disease that still gets, uh, you know, continued to perpetuate out here on this football field. And these guys need that help. You know, to uh, all these guys, this is something that can really resolve this. As Jim said, it's a neuroprotective patented substance. Do you guys believe you have CTE from your playing career? hundred percent. There's, There's no, no way you're no escaping about it. it. You know, I, I know personally, and I have people, oh, Kyle's just crazy. No, the NFL put 10 guys through a study that has been published on the National Institute of Health's website about an F-18 dye that you get injected into your body. I flew back to Boston twice, went to Massachusetts General Hospital. They are holding my records. They will not release them so I can show the NFL through my concussion settlement that I don't need to be in a hospital. I found a resolution, but you guys gave me this bad disease that's real, and you guys have these scans. They extracted 10, 10 football players from this published study on National Institute of Health's website that gave $30 million to Massachusetts General and the people controlling that study, and they will not release my documents that show clearly a battered brain. And they said every person in that study that played football has CTE on the level of an 85-year-old Alzheimer's patient. And so... Uh, you know, the science is there. They know it's there. The game continues to do it. But what I've experienced for the last four years after being diagnosed with stage two progressive dementia, that this plant is real. It has the ability in the studies that have been shown since the early 2000s can stop the progression of Alzheimer's disease, which is tau protein. And that's CTE. And that's what we need. It's real.
is, is a, you cannot get a, a head injury without getting CTE. If you've fallen and hit in your head, every person in this study showed that they have a history of developing this tau protein in certain uh, magnitudes. Those that didn't have a history of head trauma, perfect brains. Every person in the study, and they published it on National Institute of Health's website, look it up, F18 dye shows Alzheimer's in a living brain. Yeah. There were 10 football players extracted from that study. And the ignorance of it is you know, people or fans or people that don't understand sport, they'll just watch say it just happens on game day. Yeah. Imagine all your 9-on-7s that, that you had, the drills. <laughs> I can't the, imagine. Two days when we played, when, when two days were real, where you guys legitimately hit using the head twice yeah. a day, yeah. the amount of concussions. I played with Ted Johnson. Yeah. You know, Ted's story. And, um, you know, he had a bad ending here with it. Yeah, you know, After exactly. winning three Super Bowls. And yeah. he's come around. He's doing a lot better with it, yeah. though. But um, yeah. this thing is real. It is real. It yeah. is real. We need to address it. We have the solution. It's real. There is a neuroprotective patent that exists on cannabinoids. It has to be exposed. Number one re regulatory system in our body is endogenous cannabinoid system. They don't teach it in medical school. The NFL is keeping it with the government. It's a real conspiracy. <laughs> it is the truth. All right. Well, a passionate <laughs> uh, a plea and defense. Of this, gentlemen, we appreciate your time. Yeah, thank y'all. Thank you, Kyle Turley and Jimmy Chan.